Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. And um, I'm answering now a question from the May, June 2015 IGCSE Cambridge 0580 Paper 4 Variant 1. Um, this question here is um, about areas and perimeters and such, like circles and parts of circles, whatever. So this is part B of question number nine. Um, part A is about angles and circles, so I'm doing two separate videos so I can save them in separate playlists according to topic as well as paper. Anyway, so now this question here we asked first, it says the diagram shows a shaded shape formed by three semicircular arcs. The radius of each semicircle is shown in the diagram. Calculate the perimeter of the shaded shape. So we need to find the length of these, see, these arcs. <clears throat> There's three um, semicircles. You've got this small semicircle over here, which is like a bit that's cut out from the shape. Then you've got this medium-sized semicircle over, semicircle over here, this one here, which is, so the small one has a radius of two centimeters. The medium one has a radius of four centimeters, and the big one has a radius of six centimeters. So we've got to add together the three, you know, length circumferences of these um, you know, semicircles. So what we're going to do here is we're going to understand that the perimeter, the, the circumference of a circle is given by 2 pi r. Circumference is 2 times pi times r. So we're looking for a half of the circumference in each case. So what we'll do is we'll say, okay, the total perimeter is going to be, let's start with the big circle. So you're going to have 2 times pi times 6 divided by 2. That's 2 pi r over 2. That will give you the length all the way around from there to there. Then you have this semicircle here, which has a radius of 4 centimeters. So you're going to add to that 2 times pi times 4 over 2. So half the circumference of that circle. And then you've got this small part here, which is 2 times pi times 2 over 2. So I'm going to write my answer in, times, in terms of pi first, and then we'll write it in terms of you know, 3SF. So this these twos cancel out basically. So you can see you've got 6 pi um, plus 4 pi plus 2 pi. So that's 12 pi. So the perimeter is 12 pi centimeters, which to 3SF, if you write it to 3SF, you just have to put 12 pi. Okay, and press this SD button. And you see you get 37.699, 37.699. So to 3SF, that's 37.7 centimeters. Okay, so there's the answer to part B. B part one of this question, where you have to find the perimeter of the shape. Okay, now for part two. B part two says the shaded shape is made from metal 1.6 millimeters thick. Calculate the volume of metal used to make this shape. Give your answer in cubic millimeters. Okay, so the first thing you've got to notice is this unit is millimeters and these are in centimeters. So there's a, you've got to keep that in mind, all right, in case you forget the end, all right? So that's something I've noted, which we're going to deal with when we get to it. So we're going to find the volume of metal used to make this shape. So basically, they're saying this is three dimensional and this is like the cross sectional area and you're going to find the volume so it's like a prism a prism is like something which has a constant cross section all the way through okay it doesn't matter what the shape of the cross section is as long as it's constant all the way through and the volume is the cross sectional area times how deep it is how high how thick it is basically so times the height you could say if you think about it vertically so now we need to find the area of this shaded region so if we think about the area of the shaded region here, you've got this small semicircle. So we can say the area is going to be the small semicircle. Now we know the area of a circle is pi r squared. So here we're going to have half areas, okay, because they're semicircles. So you're going to have, um, I'm going to call the area of 1 and the area of 2, okay, and the area of 3. So it's like the area is the area of this first part plus the area of the second part. When I say area of 2, I mean the whole semicircle plus area of two and you have area of one 
And then we have area of three, which is that section, which actually is not actually there. That's area of three. Okay, so we can think of it as the, the total area is going to be the area of one plus the area of two minus the area of three. So the area of this semicircle plus the whole of this semicircle minus this part here. Okay, so the total area is the area of the first part, which is pi times four squared, but divided by two, plus the area of the big semicircle, which is pi times six squared, but then divided by two because it's half the area. But then you're going to take away this area that actually isn't there. This is like taking away from that big area. So you're going to take away pi times 2 squared, but then again divided by 2. So that's going to give me 16 pi over 2, which is 8 pi, plus 36 pi over 2, which is 18 pi, minus, um, that's going to be 4 pi over 2, which is 2 pi, which gives me, um, that's going to give me 26 minus 2, that's 24 pi centimeters squared. So that's the area of the cross section. So that's the area, that's a cross sectional area. So volume is equal to cross sectional area times um, the depth. Okay, now what we could have done from the beginning is we could have changed it into millimeters first. Okay, we could have done that. That's probably going to be easier, right? Because we have to give an answer in cubic millimeters. But we can, it's not a problem. We can still change this into millimeters. We can say, okay, let's change this into millimeters. We know that to change from centimeters to millimeters, we multiply by 10. But to change from centimeters squared to millimeters squared, we multiply by 10 squared. Why? Because there's 10 centimeters in a millimeter. Sorry, 10 millimeters in a centimeter. So to change from centimeters to millimeters, you multiply by 10. If you want to change from centimeters squared to millimeters squared, you square that conversion. So the cross-sectional area is 24 pi. Now I'm going to multiply that by 10 squared to change this now into, this is now going to be now in millimeters squared and I multiply it by the thickness which is 1.6 in millimeters and that should give us our volume so we have 24 times 10 squared which is 100 times 1.6 all right 3840 3840 pi and then we multiply it by pi and that gives us an answer as um, 12,063, 12,063.71, whatever. So we have to write it to 3SF, so it's going to be 12,100, 3SF, 12,100 millimeters cubed to 3SF. All right, now what we could have done, as I said, we could have, in the beginning, the alternative method is to change these into millimeters first. So here I would have used, I'll just put it in a different color so it's a bit clearer. So I would have used here, instead of four, I would have used 0 0.4. Instead of six, I would have used 0 0.6 to divide by 10. Um, sorry, multiply by 10, what am I talking about? Centi millimeter, centimeters, millimeters. So I would have used this as 40 and 60 and 20. All right, so if we did that, that would have been 160, um, 40 squared would have been 1,600 divided by 2, which would have been 800. So I'll just, I'll just do that calculation so we get the same thing. So we'd have um, pi times 40 squared divided by 2. Plus, we would have had pi times... 60 squared divided by 2 minus pi times 2 squared and divided by 2 so, so 20 squared okay and that gives us exactly the same answer that we got which was 24 pi to um that would no, well, it would have been 2400 pi but that would be now in millimeters squared and then we multiply that by the 1.6 and that gives us the same answer exactly so some people might find it easy to do that okay some people 
you find it easy to do the end, no problem, whichever way you you whichever way you understand. But you you must know this about conversions of units. Very important. Okay, because sometimes you need to know how to convert the units anyway. So if you've got something in centimeters and you want to change it to millimeters, okay, you multiply by 10 because there's 10 millimeters in centimeter. You're going from larger to smaller. But if you want to change from centimeter squared to millimeter squared, you square the conversion. If it's centimeters cubed to millimeters cubed, you would cube the conversion. So that's an important point that we need to know for converting units of areas and volumes. We need to know that anyway. So um, it's good for us to have gone through that. So there's the answer to this question. Question number, what was it? Nine, part B from the May, June 2015 Cambridge Paper 4, Variant 1. Other questions from this particular paper? If I get to answer them, I answer these older papers by request. You can find the playlist over here for that, for this paper. Other questions from the topic of areas and volumes, okay, um, you can find in the playlist over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link and the video that will appear over here will tell you how to use my channel Okay, um, for you to find what you're looking for efficiently. Thank you for watching and see you soon.